Hello and welcome to the following lesson in AQA A-Level Physics, where we're going to be looking at logs in physics, which is part of the practical skills in AQA A-Level Physics. So we're going to try to understand how to use logarithms in A-Level Physics. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the importance of logarithms in physics, determine values in equations which contain logarithms, and then finally understand how to calculate to graph equations which contain contain logarithms in them. So in this lesson we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQA A-Level Physics specification. We're going to be looking at how we can use exponential and logarithmic functions in particular equations. We're also going to be looking at using logarithms in relation to quantities that range over several orders of magnitude. And then finally we're going to try and interpret logarithmic plots and then use logarithmic plots to test exponential and power law variations. And then also as well understand how we can sketch those relationships with linked to logarithmic terms. So the logarithmic of a number is the, expo is, is the exponent to which the base must be raised to produce that number. So an example of this is as follows. So how many threes do we have to multiply to get to 81? So three times by three times by three, or three to the power of four, is equal to 81. So what we can now say is the logarithm to the base of three of 81 is four. So we can write the number of threes you need to multiply to get 81 is four. So therefore we can write that as log to the base three to, uh, times by 81 is equal to four. So these two things are equivalent. So three to the power four equal in 81 is the same as writing log three 81 is equal to four. Now this can be done for any set of values in mathematics. So it doesn't have to be three or times something five, four times to get to that value, it could be any. So an example could be seven times by seven times by seven, which is seven to the power of three is equal to 343. So therefore, we can say log 7 to 343 is equal to 3. Now, we, we can have many different bases. So in this example, you can see on the screen, we've got log to the base 3, log to the base 4, log to the base 5, and log to the base 7. Now, we write the logarithm to the base 10 uh, as log 10 or just log. So therefore, log 10 to 10 was equal to 1, or we just say log we just say log 10 equals 1, log 100 equals 2, log 1000 equals 3, and log 10,000 is equal to 4. Now, this is a way we can use to express orders of magnitude in physics. Now, we can use logarithms in physics when we need to consider data across many orders of magnitude. It's now going from from 10 to 10,000 is now is 1 to 4 instead of going from 10 all the way up to 10,000. Now there is also a special case for logarithms and that's when we use the irrational number e which is 2.718281 continuing as the base. Now we use this base log e um, as the natural logarithm and we can then shorthand it to ln. So log to the base e is written as ln and is, is said as natural log. Now the number e is also known as Euler's number. Now it can be used to calculate things like compound and interest, the rate of radioactive decay and the amount of time it takes to discharge a capacitor. Now this number e has eminent importance in mathematics alongside terms such as 0, 1, pi and i. Now, like the constant pi, e is an irrational number. Now, it can't actually be represented as a ratio of integers. And it's also a constant linked with exponential growth and exponential decay. So we've got two special cases of logarithms we tend to use in physics. Log to the base 10, which we just call log, and then log to the base e, which we call natural log, and write it out as ln. Now, there are a series of rules which are true for all logarithms, including both natural logs and base 10 logs. So the first one is that log a times by b is equal to log a plus log b. So when two t when two numbers in a term are multiplied together, we can separate them out as additional values when we have them in terms of logs. So for example, we could say log kx is equal to log k plus log x, and it's also the same for natural logarithms as well. So ln kx is equal to ln k plus ln x. 
x. The second rule we've got to know is that log a over b is equal to log a minus log b. So when you have a term which is, has includes a dividing uh, sign in there, and when you're doing a log or natural log, you can separate them out as, ma as by subtracting one from the other. So for example, log d over t is equal to log d minus log t, and natural log d over t is equal to log d minus log t. Now the final law you've got to be aware of is that log to the x to the power n is equal to n log x and natural log x to the power of n is equal to n natural log x. So what we're basically saying with this rule is that in these different situations that actually when you have an a, a Power, a power term in an equation, the power term can come out as just a multiplier in your overall term when you're including a log. Now, you are not given these rules in your examination. You've got to be able to memorize them. Now, we use logarithms in physics to work out values in exponentials. So, for example, a charge on a capacitor. Well, the decay of charge on a discharging capacitor is proportional to the amount of charge left on the capacitor, which we express with the following equation. Equation, Q is equal to Q0 e to the power of minus t over RC. Now we can use logarithms to find values in this equation. Now when a term includes e in it, we've got to use natural logarithms, ln. So a question could ask you to rearrange the, the, question, the equation above to find the resistance R of the circuit. So how do you do that? Well, step one is you rearrange the equation to have the exponential term by itself. So we can now say q over q0 is equal to e to the minus t over rc. We then naturally log both sides of the equation. Now when we do this, it's important to note that you're going to do both sides and it's the natural log because um, we're using the power of e in there as a base. So we now say natural log q over q0 is equal to natural log e to the power minus t over rc. Now we can simplify both sides of the equation here to say natural log q over q0 is equal to minus t over rc. Now as shown in our definition of a natural logarithm, when you naturally log an exponential term, the exponential term becomes a standard part of the equation because it's just simplifying it. So therefore we can say natural log e to the power minus t over rc rc just becomes minus t over rc. What you then do is you then rearrange your equation to make the wanted term the subject of your equation. So now we've rearranged our term to make r the subject. Now you can plot exponential relations using the natural log. So an example, let's consider the equation y is equal to k times by e to the power of minus ax. Now it's important to note that if you take the natural log of both sides of the equation, you get ln y is equal to ln k e to the power a minus a, a minus a x. Now we've done this because it's got the term e in. Now we can now use a previous logarithm rule because we've got two terms being multiplied together inside a logarithmic term. So we can now say log y is equal to log k plus log e to the power minus a x. And we can then use our definition of the natural logarithm to simplify this further because ln uh, times by e to the power of something will remove that e to the power and just make the power the, the term in the equation. So we now say log y is equal to log k minus, minus ax. Now we can consider this to be a y equals mx plus c equation, which means we'll get a straight line graph. So we can say y is log y. Uh, we can say um, x is x minus a is going to be equal to m and log k is minus c. So therefore, what do we know? If we have our graph with log y on the y and x on the x, we can say the following. Our gradient is going to be minus a, which is going to be the power term, which is multiple, which is the power term is multiplied by x in the equation. So gradient is equal to minus a. We know it's a minus gradient because it's sloping downwards. 
we also know that c is equal to log k so it works through as such like that now this can be done for any equation which contains an exponential term with an e in it now we call this a log linear graph because whilst the y-axis is a logarithmic term ln y the x-axis is a linear term x now the other thing you can do is you can plot any power law as a log log graph so for example consider an equation given to you y is equal to k uh, times by x to the power of n now you should take log of base 10 of both sides of the equation to get the following log y is equal to log k x to the power of n now you might think why aren't we using the natural logarithmic term well we're not doing this because and um, we haven't got the term of e in there so we can use a previous logarithm rule because we've got two terms multiplied by each other so we can say log y is equal to log k plus log x to the power of n now also we've still got a power term in a logarithmic function so therefore we can use another logarithmic rule and we can say log y is equal to log k plus n log x now again this is a y equals mx plus c equation so we're going to get a straight line graph so if we have log y is y and log x is x we can have n is m and log and log k is minus c so therefore if we have log y is y log x is x m is now going to be n so the gradient of your straight line graph is going to be the power term of your um equation and then c is going to be log k so our y intercept now is log k now it's important to note again that this can be done for any equation which contains an exponential cut term so it can be any one that's been given to you now we call this a log log graph because both the y-axis and the x-axis are log terms now as a student you should be able to use calculators to find and use power exponential logarithmic functions use logarithms in relation to quantities that range over several orders of magnitude, interpret logarithmic plots, and then use logarithmic plots to test exponential power and uh, law variations. So, and finally, sketch relationships which are modeled by y is equal to e to the power of x or minus x and apply that to physical relationships such as the discharging capacitor or radioactive decay. So, if we've been successful and learnt in this lesson, we should be able to understand the importance of logarithms in physics, determine values in equations which contain logarithms and finally understand how to graph equations which contain logarithms. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on logs in physics which is part of the practical skills aspect of AQA A-level physics. As always thank you very much for watching today's lesson and have a lovely day.